Good morning. I have to confess, I forgot I had to bring the Bible with me this morning. That's why I'm a tad late. But that's a good reason to be late, huh? Be with the Bible than without the Bible. It is good to be in worship together today. Uh, we're going to start, uh, this is Trinity Sunday, and we're going to start in a little bit different way. Um, for our gathering words, we are going to read an affirmation of faith, and it'll be on the screen. It's number 885. If you would please stand and join with me. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Let us join together in a hymn that was one time voted as one of the favorites in our country. It's Holy, 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 number 64. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim, for thee, which wert and art and evermore shalt be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons. 
present, blessed Trinity. Please be seated. I have a number of announcements today. We haven't had many announcements during the pandemic because there just wasn't much to announce, right? But now we are back in a time when we are starting to do some things again. So today we have started with putting altar flowers again. And if you would like to sign up to give flowers on Sunday, just let Catherine Hill or Lori Milheiser know, text or email, it's $25. And today's flowers are a gift from the hills, celebrating being back in the sanctuary again for worship, but also in honor of their daughter-in-law, Becky Sweet, for her birthday. Uh, I wanna remind you to send me a prayer request so that I can share them on Sundays. Uh, I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe we only have a few more weeks where we're gonna have to worship in this different way. We'll see what happens June 15th. There's gonna be a pastor's meeting that day. I may need a governing board meeting after that, uh, but I, I'm confident there'll be some adjustments, how far we'll go in adjustments. I, I just can't even predict yet, but we'll see. Um, I also want to share with you that Tim Ross has a new appointment, but it's in Texas. So he and his family are moving to Alto, Texas. So we will do a farewell for him, we hope. And, uh, but it's very exciting there. They, it's a two point charge uh, in Alto, Texas. So it's pretty exciting for him and his family. Um, I haven't, I know announced it in the sanctuary. I think we announced it once on Zoom, but I just wanna remind you that we, uh, for annual conference this year, we will have someone commissioned and ordained Brogan is going to be commissioned at annual conference, and she's moving to a new appointment in Escondido. And Blair is going to be ordained as an elder. And so June 19th is when that service will take place and you can um, watch it on Zoom. So that will be very special. I also want you to know that Handbells is going to start meeting. Now we're not ready to have the choir meet yet because of the infection and the risk of singing and masks and all those things. But handbells, uh, Eric and I have figured out how to do it uh, socially distanced because obviously you've got the tables and all of that. And we have approval to do it. It'll start a week from this Thursday and it'll be at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. I think that's it for my announcements. I'm gonna then turn to the scripture. So we have two scripture passages today. The first one is from Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. And my eyes are older than they used to be. <laughs> Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And then from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we pray that we will hear these words with our ears and with our hearts and with our souls 
May we hear and know and live these words. Amen. So today being Trinity Sunday, I really have focused on very traditional hymns and very traditional scripture. Did you know that in the early church, this was called the Octave of Whitson or the Octave of Whitson? Now raise your hand if you already knew that. Yes, score five points for me. <laughs> so what do you think the Octave of Whitson means? Octave eight. It means the eighth day of Pentecost. And it wasn't until the Middle Ages that it became a celebration of the Trinity. And it does fit somewhat naturally because in Holy Week, we focus on the life and death and resurrection of Christ and why God came in human form. And Pentecost, we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit. Some years ago, as I said earlier, a survey was done of favorite hymns and Holy, Holy, Holy was the winner. The theological statement at the end of verse one and verse four is classic. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Now that's a simple phrase, right? It's a simple phrase, but it's a difficult concept. One of the earliest songs I ever memorized was the Gloria Patri. When I was a child, we used to sing it every Sunday. And somehow we've gotten away from that tradition. And Eric asked that we use it today. So we will stand and sing it after the sermon. I told you we're doing some very traditional things today. But those words were so foundational to my faith. I learned them and memorized them before I even had a chance to understand what they mean. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. My father was the one who taught me that amen means so be it. Now, before that, I thought it just meant the end of something, right? Because we sang it at the end of every hymn. So I just thought it meant, okay, we're done. It's over. But instead, it means so be it. So be it makes an even stronger statement of faith. The Trinity is one of those topics that often comes up as a question, especially in lifelong members, meaning lifelong church members can have a handle on a variety of theological topics and yet still wrestle to understand the Trinity the three in one. And it took a couple of hundred years for the early Christians to work it out. So it shouldn't be too surprising that it's hard for us to understand. And I have learned over time that different people connect better with different aspects of the Trinity, or even at different points in our lives, sometimes we connect to one part of the Trinity more than to another. Sometimes it helps to break it down into pieces before we try to understand the whole or the one. So we start with God as creator. And in many ways, I think this is the easiest to understand. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And all we have to do is to look at our beautiful mountains or the expanse of ocean that seems to go forever, or even to look at the tiny hands of a newborn baby. And somehow we just have a sense of this power that, that is beyond our understanding and yet kind of in our grasp at the same time to know that there's this great force at work in the world that created the world. And looking at the stars at night is always a reminder of the immenseness of God, the infinity of God. And the Gloria Patria uses the word father. And some people feel like describing God as father is the best way for them to connect with God. Jesus used it. Though if you study the word Abba, which Jesus is quoted as using, it is arguably better translated as daddy. And daddy gives a whole different feeling. It's a more intimate relationship word than the more distant father. 
But some people find the word father a barrier, and even more so the word daddy. They may have had a difficult relationship with their father. It could have been abusive, or their father might have been distant. And describing God as father gets in the way for them. Some people feel better calling God mother, which can make sense. And yet some others find the word mother much more of a barrier than the word father. And then we come to Jesus as God's son, a mediator between us and God. God made flesh. That's why I chose the hymn at the end of the service of the father's love begotten ere the worlds began to be. He is alpha and omega. He the source, the ending he of the things that are, that have been, and the future years shall see evermore and evermore. In our passage from Romans, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access to God's grace. The emphasis in the scripture passage and the chapters before it is on the importance of faith, not works. The concept of Jesus as a person, God made flesh, again, works better for some people than for others. Honestly, this point wasn't brought home to me as much in a seminary class as it was by a church member in my very first appointment. She had struggled with immense physical pain in her life, and she talked about praying and seeing Jesus sitting right next to her on a chair, right next to her bed. And she was already a person of great faith. But when she saw Jesus, she felt her pain go away. It didn't go away permanently. It wasn't a miracle story in that sense. But the pain was never as bad again. And when she felt the pain return, she could just look at the chair and feel some relief. Well, what she experienced was miraculous in its way. What she came out of it was with a deep connection to both the humanity and the divinity of Christ. For me, the humanity of Jesus helps me. Whether I picture Jesus as having children gathered around him or even the very human side of anger being shown at the money lenders at the temple, or his Gethsemane experience, when he asked that the cup be taken from him. These are all experiences I can relate to and connect with. I don't know if you've ever taken the time to look, but right over there, there is a stained glass that shows Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. And I find it a really moving, moving portrait. The Holy Spirit is very experiential. It's that moment in worship when you know something holy has happened. It's that time when you've prayed and you felt an aha moment of understanding, or you heard some direction in life, or maybe just in that moment, you felt the love and comfort that you needed. Honestly, I have experienced it so often in the hospital when I have gone to pray with people, which is the thing I think above all I've missed in this pandemic time. But when you're there in the hospital and the need is so great and so obvious in that room, and when we hold hands together, there's a sense of presence and that our prayers are heard that we are seen and known, that our suffering is known, and that God's love pours out in that moment of praying together. It really is an experience of the Holy Spirit. In this passage from John, Jesus says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. This passage comes at the end of multiple things Jesus teaches the disciples about the Holy Spirit. 
such as him saying, I will give you an advocate, a comforter, a guide. With Pentecost, the Holy Spirit created that feeling of koinonia that was so critical in the early church and has been a rich part of our Christian heritage ever since. When it comes to the Trinity, each part is explainable, and yet, at the same time, a divine mystery. What's hardest to understand is the one in the three. And over the years, I've explained it a number of different ways. I've explained it in a very human way. So for example, I am a mother and a daughter and a sister and a pastor and a neighbor. Those are things about roles and relationships, but maybe not so much about existence. So one theologian described it using water as an example and said that it can be liquid, ice, or steam. But again, it's not just about different roles or different relationships and even forms of existence. That affirmation of faith that we said at the beginning to me explains so much. It really speaks to my mind and to my heart and to my soul. But we still struggle truly to understand. And as one theologian said, books and books and books have been written about it and we still struggle to understand. So I want to conclude with what I think is far more simple and straightforward. Are you ready? If you are in awe of God as creator, if you have gratitude for Jesus who died on the cross for us, if you know that God loves us and you feel that love, especially through the Holy Spirit and feel the deep peace that comes with it, then you know all you need to know about the Trinity. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we do stand before you with awe. Your creation is too marvelous for us to understand. The gift of your son makes us so humble and yet also feel so loved. And the power of your Holy Spirit moving in the world, moving in our lives, moving in our times of worship is a time when we really feel your presence. We feel your comfort and your guidance. So help us to rely on our firm foundations of faith, those things we understand and yet to feel comfortable that there's many things we don't yet understand. And knowing that one day we will be face to face with you and some things that we don't understand now will be revealed to us then. By your grace. Amen. Let us then stand together and sing the Gloria Patri. And I hope you know this and love this as much as I do. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Now, you know, I like to talk to you and have you talk back to me, and we can't do it very well right now, but I can just ask you this. How many of you know that tune to the Gloria Patri or a different tune to the Gloria Patri? Raise your hand if you know a different one better. Okay, hands down. How many of you know this, the one we just sang better? Raise your hand. Okay, an informal survey. 
because I chose the other tune. And it's the one I remember from my childhood. And then Eric said, well, aren't we gonna do the other one? And I said, well, I love them both. So interesting. We come uh, to a time to share um, some of our prayer requests and just to remind you that if you get them to me, um, I will announce them on Sunday. And then at such time as we're allowed to pass a mic between us, then we'll go back to, to sharing with us the way we used to do. Um, I do have in mind that it is Memorial Day tomorrow, and you know we're trying to keep the service a little shorter, and so what I'm doing is the pastoral prayer is actually written by an um, Army veteran, and so I will, that is going to be my um, remembrance of Memorial Day. We also, we, uh, we lost uh, someone who is known and loved to our church family. Joseph Chowan passed away and the service was actually held yesterday. And I did ask the family if they wanted me to get the word out if people would be invited and I didn't hear back. And so I'm, I'm imagining that in this COVID age that they were restricted on how many people were allowed to go. Kathy Meyer would like us to pray for she's having blood tests this week. And Christy has asked us to continue to pray for baby Moses. They had to insert a feeding tube. And um, the Lemon's niece, Laura, appreciates our prayers. I also have lost the side note I was given. So I'll just. Um, Rob Branson, his heart rate dropped significantly and he was hospitalized for several days, but he's home now with adjusted medication. And then also Neva asked that we pray for her grandson, David. He's bipolar and yesterday he took off to live in Salt Lake City. So she's concerned and the family's concerned about decision-making and, and uh, whether things will go well for him there. Those are the prayer requests that I have. I hope I haven't forgotten any, but we will also um, send it out by email tomorrow. So if there's something that I've missed, um, make sure I know before tomorrow and, and we'll include it. Well, I said Monday, we'll send it Tuesday. With that then, I wanna share this prayer with you. Again, the Reverend Dr. Mary Catherine Miller wrote this for Memorial Day, especially keeping in mind that it's Trinity Sunday. So let us pray. I invite us now to take a breath and to seek a quiet place within. Come fount of life, come source of healing, come bearer of wisdom and strength. Three, one God, come into this time of worship and to our homes and to our varied spaces. Sit with us a while, we need you. Wrap us in your reassuring grace on this day we wrestle with your nature and how you reach out to us as our mysterious triune three one holy God and community. This weekend divine parent, we remember just how high a cost has been paid by some to help ensure the rights and liberties the rest of us enjoy and can at times take for granted. Come, fill us now with gratitude for the lives of those who, having heard our nation's call to stand against oppression in all its forms, sacrificed, laid down their lives so that others, including us, might live ours more fully and freely. Come, merciful God, pour forth your promised comfort into hearts hurting from the all too soon loss of spouses, parents, children, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, neighbors, buddies, and coworkers. Help us to remember them well, even though we no longer get to see them, to touch them, to celebrate the joys of life with them. May we truly honor with our own lives the sacrifice they made Come with a soothing balm of your gentle touch, bind up the wounds of war, restore to wholeness the bodies, hearts, minds, and spirits of the men and women who also answer the call to stand for freedom, justice, and peace, and who have returned home bearing wounds that are often unseeable, but oh so painful and so deep within. Come. 
Protect those who continue to serve in harm's way as their families wait for the day of their safe return. Give them the courage and strength they need to face the days of waiting unafraid. Thank you for being with us as we remember. And may today be the day when your love rules in every human heart and peace breaks out in every land. Trusting that you always hear us, we join now in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us turn then to the closing hymn of the Father's love begotten. Please stand. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending, he of the things that are that have been, and that future year shall see evermore and evermore. O ye heights of heaven, adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing, cause dominions bow before him, and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent, every voice in concert ring, evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father, and O Holy Ghost to thee, him enchant and high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be honor glory and dominion and eternal victory evermore and ever